Uh, first, I would like to make some correction uh, of uh, one of the proofs uh, of last lecture. So I, uh, I figured out that I, I made some a mistake that I wouldn't like to fix now. So uh, remember what was, uh, what did we deal with? Um, of course, we had uh, simple algebra and we had um, a triangular decomposition uh, n minus plus uh, Cartan subalgebra plus uh, n plus. n minus n plus are uh, uh, well, uh, this this are uh, this are direct sums of uh, root subspaces corresponding to either positive or negative roots, respectively. Um, and we had also uh, weights and weight subspaces. So if uh, V was a representation uh, of uh, G, uh, and if we fix some element lambda uh, from H star, then uh, we write V of lambda to be all elements, uh, all vectors in V such that, um, well, if I take an element H in a Cartan subalgebra, act on V, this is the same as multiplication by number given by this lambda, um, right? This is for all h in h. And then I said uh, that, okay, if a dimension uh, of v um, is uh, less than infinity, so if uh, we have finite dimensional representation, then um, we had the statement is that uh, dimension of V of lambda is the same as dimension um, of V um, of W of lambda for each mm, element W of the vial group. So this was one of the propositions last time. And we, we proved it, but I said something wrong in the proof, so this proposition. Uh, correction. Uh, to the proof so uh, our mm, main argument was that uh, if I consider um, V lambda right I um, I was writing something like this V of K SL to alpha i, right? So actually it's not equality here, but rather inclusion. So first of all, what is this thing? I consider V uh, as a representation of, of this SL2 corresponding to um, i simple root triple, okay? And uh, then, uh, SL2 weight of this V is a representation of SL2 alpha I is K. So this is what it means. Um, so K, K here was what, uh, it was this number. K is uh, 2 lambda alpha I, alpha I, alpha I. So if you just if you just take uh, this definition of what is a weight, of what is a weight subspace, right, then um, uh, you, you can just check that the following number gives you the number, which is uh, eigenvalue of H alpha. 
Okay. So I claim that uh, this should be not equality here, but rather um, like this. Why is that? Because, of course, here we fix only this k for some fixed i. Right? We, we can have different lambdas which give us the same, the same number k here. In principle, why not? Uh, okay, and then, um, and then uh, similar mistake is this. I also would like to have inclusion here. So this was V corresponding to SL2 weight negative K, SL2 alpha I. Okay, this can be checked directly, knowing what is what is uh, uh, reflection corresponding to the i-th root, so that the corresponding eigenvalue for h alpha i is this one. If I reflect, this we did actually uh, on the board, and then um, I claim that okay, from the representation theory of SL two, I know that um, dimensions of this coincide, and then then I am done. So here. Since I don't have uh, equalities, I have only inclusions, I uh, need uh, something more. I, I need um, explicitly isomorphism between these two uh, uh, weight subspaces of, of, of SL2. And this isomorphism is this one. So I claim that this Fi, K, right, this is an element of a SL2 alpha I triple. And I apply it k times to to this subspace. I will get I will go here actually, right? So I take what was going on. I take uh, weight subspace SL two of weight k, right, and go down by f i uh, k times, right? I will end up in negative k. Because the, the step is two. So this is k minus two, and so on. But we know also that this is an isomorphism uh, because we can go back backwards by e's. Right? So f i k is um, an isomorphism of uh, v. Um, v k s o two alpha i and um, v negative k s o two alpha i just because of this picture uh, and um, uh, with inverse e I k, but not exactly, because when I apply f and then I apply e i, I might uh, not go back to this to, to the vector I started, but maybe some multiple of it. An important thing that this multiple is not zero, of course. It can not only be zero if I go further to this vector, like deeper than negative k. Uh, inverse is this times some number. But then you can check directly that if I apply f i k to uh, to some vector from here, um, let me write it like this: v lambda. Then this will belong to to this subspace v of s i. Lambda. This is just uh, this is just because of uh, commutation relations, and we, we know how to how weight um, actually changes when I apply f i's. I I subtract alpha i. Right. Uh, so if I subtract, so I, I have to subtract alpha i k times from lambda, and then it will be exactly as i of lambda. But also, 
the similar argument if, if, if I apply EIK, apply it to V of SI lambda, I know that I appear in here, V of lambda. So, so it's not only isomorphism between these spaces, but it maps this space to this space, and the image is exactly is exactly V of SI lambda, because I can go backwards by E's. So this, this actually means that F, uh, FIK also has a morphism not only uh, of these spaces, but of these subspaces. Okay, and therefore, uh, this equality for dimension falls. So a lit little bit more uh, detail we need here. Uh, because there are not equalities here, by, but inclusions. Okay, so ne next thing um, that I would like to, so, okay, it was two weeks, so let me remind you uh, what definition, what uh, other definitions we had. Um, we had definition of single vector, so V of, some weight vector is called singular uh, if it's killed by uh, n plus. And uh, we had a notion of highest uh, weight uh, representation. So L, so, so it's a reminder. L is a representation of highest weight lambda if it is generated by um, a singular vector of weight uh, lambda. This was one. Uh, okay, and uh, I think we also proved something about L. Uh, in particular, ah, okay, we had also uh, in this list of reminders uh, partial order on weights. And we wrote that lambda is greater or equal than mu. Um, it means that uh, mu, uh, it means that lambda is mu plus sum uh, i from 1 to r and i of alpha i, where n i here are um, non-negative integers. And uh, we also pro proved the following simple uh, proposition that um, if L is a uh, representation of highest weight uh, lambda, then it admits um, weight decomposition like this, where mu is less or equal than lambda. And also, um, so this is a uh, representation of highest weight lambda. And uh, also we proved that lambda is a unique highest weight in such a representation. So if I have a representation and two, uh, it's generated by two vectors, one uh, of, uh, is a single vector of weight lambda, another one single vector of weight mu, then lambda is equal to mu. It just falls from here. So lambda is unique um, highest weight. Uh, and we also introduced um, um, Verma modules 
Verma modules. Um, these are modules which, uh, these are quotients, we introduce them as quotients of U of G, universal enveloping of G, by some uh, left ideal. And this, uh, here I denote it by J, so J is this uh, sum um, U of G uh, H minus lambda of H as H runs over Cartan subalgebra, right? So this is the dependence. This is where M lambda depends on this lambda. And plus also U of N plus. Um, so let us do it like this. U of G N plus. So this, we just, by quotienting like that, we just say that now one in U of G is a singular vector because it's killed by all N plus. And um, it is single vector of weight lambda. And everything else is just um, so image of one we usually denote uh, by V lambda. This is the highest weight vector in M lambda. So it's killed by N plus and uh, it is of weight lambda. Now let, let, us, um, let us formulate uh, another proposition, which is uh, also can be called uh, universal property of Fermat modules. Proposition. Um, so let L uh, be a representation of highest weight uh, lambda. Then um, L is a quotient of M lambda by some submodule W. Uh, w is not good. Let it be. Mm, I don't know, V. Also, we need uh, some um, observation about V that I will formulate in this proposition uh, for, for the future use. So where this continuation of a proposition, um, V admits a weight decomposition. So I will write it like this. V is, uh, is a direct sum over V mu, where mu is less or equal than lambda. So as it is, it's not, it's not uh, obvious that actually if I take a submodule in the Verma module, I can, I can, it's something, it might be something infinite dimensional, right? Actually, uh, in, uh, in all cases, this is infinite dimensional. And, and then, uh, why, why would it, why can we write it like this? So, not, not clear, but uh, here we have some particle. It's actually, it's actually true, right, that for any submodule or Fermat module, <coughs> you can write it like this. But uh, here we, we are proving something uh, weaker, so that um, if I take a representation of highest weight uh, lambda, then it's a quotient by some, some model that admits weight decomposition. Okay. Um, so let's prove this. Uh, 
uh, we just need to find homomorphism from M lambda to L. And, and this homomorphism uh, like of, of representations. And we would like this homomorphism to be subjective. Then, then we will have uh, the first part of the statement, right? So um, consider Mm. The following where natural homomorphism uh, from M lambda to L, and then um, let's call it somehow uh, maybe I don't know P lambda. So what I would like to do, so M lambda is the highest weight, representation of highest weight. So therefore, uh, everything is ge generated by V lambda. So therefore, any vector here is of, of the form A times V lambda, where A is some element of U of uh, G, right? So any element here is like that. And then I just say that, okay, it's uh, image, and this map is just, I take highest weight vector here, uh, let's call it um, W lambda, I don't know. And apply A to, to this W lambda. So this is highest weight vector. So uh, the only thing that I should worry about here is that uh, this map is well defined. So if it's if it's well defined, then it is a surjective, and it's homomorphism because it by definition respects the action of U of G. Right. Um, so we need to check that. Uh, P lambda is well defined. Um, in other words, uh, I need to do what? Uh, so if if I have A V lambda equal to B V lambda, suppose that I have two elements of universal enveloping algebra such that, uh, well, these two vectors coincide. Then I, I need to uh, be sure that A equals to B, right? Um, so is it, is it true that A equals to B then? Um, so of course, of course, it is true, be just because of uh, poincare bergov fit theorem. Okay. So, but by uh, poincare bergov fit theorem, mm, the map mm, well. U of n minus uh, to to where to m lambda. How do I define this map? Let us code. I don't know phi. Um, so I take an element a in here and map it to to a v lambda. So by PBW, this map is um, an isomorphism of vector spaces. Is it clear why? Okay, let's uh, let's spell it out. So so. Um, 
we just need to remember what is M lambda. So M lambda is this thing, right? So upon Karabergov fit theorem says uh, the following, just fix some basis in G, okay? So let us fix basis uh, corresponding to triangular decomposition, right? Um, so first, first of all, um, so, so let me fix the following basis, x1, x, um, I don't know, k, y1, actually, um, yes, k, y1, um, 1, uh, y, um, we actually, actually, maybe it's not the best way to denote it by whatever, y r and z1 z k. So this is a basis, uh, suppose in n minus, this is a basis in um, h. And this is basis in uh, n plus. Okay. And uh, PBW says that uh, you, you just take all monomials in this particular order that I fix right now. Uh, and maybe you, you'll get some powers also, but this will give you basis. Uh, all different monomials give, gives you basis. But, um, you see all elements of, uh, so this, this is basis consistent with, with this quotient. So uh, some subset of this basis is actually basis in this ideal that I quotient by. Okay, so all elements in my P PBW basis that I chose, such that I have some powers of Z and some powers of Y, actually give, give me, uh, um, well, y, y minus lambda, y minus lambda of y should be here, right? So maybe, maybe I should uh, ch change this uh, basis to, well, it's, it's, still, it's still a basis, right? So a a anyways, so, so I quotient, uh, by, by these elements of the basis, right? And what is left is just uh, x1, xk after quotient. But this is the basis of n plus, right? So I, cho I choose some basis by PPW, which is, uh, which is consistent with taking quotient. I just throw away all elements of the basis that, uh, that I kill by this quotient. What is left are just monomials of x1, xk, right? Mod of course some elements, some other elements, but this, this is the basis. So therefore, but this is the basis in n, n minus, or in u n minus. So this is basis in n minus, monomials are, is basis in u n minus. So I just proved that this is an isomorphism of vector space. Okay, but then, um, but this, this exp already implies this thing, because if I have A V lambda equals B V lambda, that means that A minus B V lambda is zero. Right, so since this is, um, well, of course I can, uh, any, any element here, I can replace G here, by n minus, right? Again, by the same argument. I just order my basis such that on the right I have n plus, right, which will kill, will kill V lambda. So the only, the only uh, elements that I left, left uh, are without these variables, if you wish, in, in my monomials, okay? So I can actually replace this 
with n minus. And then I have this, which implies, since this is a nice amorphism, a minus b equals zero. So this is a well-defined map. Uh, and it is surjective, of course, because everything is generated by W lambda. And uh, generated by U of G, of course, but of course we can, by the same argument, replace G by N minus, right? Because if you apply N plus to, to W lambda, then it's just zero. Or if you apply H, it just stay on this W lambda because it's a weight vector. Okay. So very well, um, this is the uh, first part of the proposition. And we just need to see that, uh, let me take a kernel of, of my P lambda. And I need to see that this kernel admits such a decomposition. So let me take V, it's a kernel of pi lambda. Um, so let me take um, some v small in, inside this kernel. But this uh, v is, an, is a, uh, of course, lives inside m lambda, right? So let me take v. Uh, it's in a kernel, so um, and it's, it's inside m lambda. So therefore, uh, it can be decomposed into uh, some weight vectors. Mu, uh, I don't know, L. Uh, I resolved all the letters there. I don't know. D. Uh, where uh, V mu 1 and so uh, v, v mu i is in V, in, is a weight vector of, of weight mu i. So this is just because mu lambda has weight decomposition. Every vector I can write as a sum of weight vectors. Okay. Now to prove this, I need to check that each V mu, uh, v mu i is also in the kernel. Right? Then, then every, so wh what is V of mu? It's a, it's a vectors in V in a kernel that are weight vectors, right? So if I, ch if I check that each V mu i is in a kernel, it means that every vector in the kernel I can write as a sum uh, of, um, of vectors in, uh, in the kernel, but weighted vectors. So this is exactly this. Of course, of course, uh, you might wonder maybe it's some not direct, but since uh, since uh, in M lambda different weight subspaces uh, do not intersect, then he here they also cannot intersect. Okay. So directness of sum is not is is, is out of uh, question. We, what we question is that each v mu i is um, is inside the kernel. Sorry, yes. No, no, this we know. Now I would like to prove. So we need uh, to show that v mu i is inside v. Right. Of course, these are all some elements of M lambda. Ah, sorry. So here it's a mistake. It should be like that. So of course, it's not in V. So what, this is what we had, would like to prove, that I can actually write V here. Right? So I need to prove that v, each V mu i is also in the kernel. Then I, I can replace this mu, mu lambda with V. But uh, again, this is, this is uh, pretty easy because, well, you take V, apply P lambda to it. Uh, of course, it's zero because V is in the kernel. 
Uh, then you use linearity of P lambda and uh, you can write V mu 1 plus pi lambda V mu 2 plus and so on pi lambda um, V mu uh, or D. But then uh, pi lambda is a homomorphism so therefore it pr uh, Weight vectors goes to weight vector, of course. So each of these guys uh, belong to uh, to uh, m lambda of mu one. This one uh, m lambda of uh, mu one. This one to m lambda of mu two, and so on. This is just because homomorphism of representations respects the uh, action of uh, H, right? So therefore, eigenspace uh, for H goes to eigenspace to H. So eigenvector goes to eigenvector. But uh, we know that M lambda is a direct sum of its weight subspaces, right? And this is direct. And each of these vectors lives in different direct components. And sum is zero. Therefore, it means that each of them is zero. Right? So therefore, V pi lambda of V mu i is zero for each i from 1 to d. This is exactly what we needed to prove this. OK. So next, uh, any, any questions here? OK. So next uh, step is to prove the following. Uh, D is just uh, this number, so it's decomposed in some number of, uh, it, it depends on V. No, it's not a dimension of anything. So, so we proved uh, this universal property of, of Fermat modules, right, that any representation of highest weight is a quotient uh, of a Fermat module. Then, um, okay, next proposition. So we are moving towards the classification of all reducible finite dimensional presentations of, of simple Lie algebras. Um, and this will be helpful. So for each um, lambda from H star, uh, there exists at most one representation of uh, highest weight lambda. Actually, it is, it is true that exactly one uh, sorry, I think I skipped uh, some very important uh, word here. There exists at most one irreducible representation. This is important, of course. At most one irreducible. Representation of highest weight lambda. So it's actually true uh, that exactly one. Um, and uh, well, this, this uh, will follow from some uh, exercise that I would like to give you for the seminar. But for classification, we need uh, this one. 
Um, all right. So let's prove this. So proof. Um, let L1 and L2 uh, be uh, two irreducible representations uh, of highest weight lambda. Then we know that L1 is uh, M lambda quotient by some W1, uh, V1, and uh, similarly L, L2 is a quotient of M lambda by some submodule V2. Where V1, V2 admit uh, weight decomposition, as we proved. Also, they, we know that L1 and L2 are reducible. What that means then uh, for V1 and V2? So it actually means that uh, these are, um, uh, so we don't want uh, L1 and L2 to be zero spaces. Okay, it's, uh, it's, uh, I guess it's a matter of convention what we do with a zero space. Uh, but but uh, let's let's say they are not zero. Then v one and v two they are proper maximal submodules in, in M lambda. Maximal means that they are not uh, uh, if if so. Then let me write this down and then. Explain what it means. So V1 and V2. Uh, so let me write it like this. Since L1 and L2 are irreducible, reducible, um, V1 and V2 are proper uh, maximal submodules uh, of M lambda. Um, so maximal means that they are not inside some other submodule proper submodule. Of course, they are inside M lambda itself. So, but there's no other submodule M lambda that uh, such that this V1 and V2 is inside. So let me write this down to be clear. So V is maximal uh, if only if so if there exists so if if for some other submodule V tilde we have this then either V tilde is V or V tilde is M lambda. Why would, uh, so why uh, V1 and V2 are maximal? Because, yes, because suppose that we have some, some sub, uh, module, right, uh, that actually contains, say, V1, right? then the, the quotient of M lambda by this module would be in a reducible submodule in, uh, would be in submodule in L1. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. N so let, okay, let me write this down, right? So, so 
um, not, not, and uh, I don't think I said this correctly right now, so let, let us be accurate. So um, suppose, uh, say, V1 is inside some V. Right, uh, and this V is also submodule of V lambda. Then, um, what I claim is that V quotient by V one, of course, is a submodule of M lambda quotient by V one. But this is L, L1, right? And uh, so therefore L1, uh, so V, uh, it's it either L1 is V or V1, and then V is M lambda, or uh, V, Quotient by V1 is zero, and uh, V is, is V1, so that explains. Um, okay, uh, so parentheses should be <laughs> over the whole word here. So, so maybe I, I'll just erase them. It's a good explanation, anyways. Um, okay, so uh, we know that V1 and V2 are proper maximal, but let us consider um, their sum. Take this V1, V2. Um, consider V1 plus V2. It is uh, this sum subspace, also it's closed, uh, so it's a sub-representation, of course. I claim it is, a, it is proper. Okay, so it's, it's not the whole M lambda. For, for the following reason, um, I just claim that um, V1, um, I just claim that the highest weight vector cannot, uh, is not contained in here. Uh, this is just uh, because um, we can compute um, the weight uh, subspace of this of weight lambda. So it's, it's either one dimensional or zero. If it's one dimensional, then it of course contains this. This is the only vector of weight lambda in M lambda. If it's zero, they, then it's not inside. Okay, so therefore, uh, I claim that this is uh, V1 of lambda plus V2 of lambda. So that's where we need uh, decomposition, weight decomposition. Uh, of of these kernels. So remember, in in, uh, in our proposition, we proved that uh, if uh, L is a quotient of M lambda by some V, then V admits weight decomposition. Okay. Uh, so um, so we have V one is a direct sum of V one. Uh, of lambda, uh, of course, and then V2 is direct sum of V2. Oh, uh, wait, wait, sorry. M mu here. And here I should write strictly less than lambda, because if it includes lambda, then uh, they're not proper, right? Then I can take V lambda and generate uh, uh, everything and get, all, get the, uh, the whole M, M lambda, right? So this should be like that. 
Then I consider their sum. And uh, therefore, um, mm, therefore v1 uh, plus v2 is also direct sum uh, of v1 uh, plus v2 mu, where mu is strictly less than lambda. This is because of this, right? Why? And therefore, therefore, uh, ac actually, it, it already means that uh, um, maybe maybe I don't even need this line here. So let me see. I kind of uh, um, uh, how how to write this down better. Um, Mm, yes. So, so um, what I claim here is that uh, so uh, this this one this one is zero, right? This one is zero. So therefore, the whole thing is zero. Okay. Um, but again, so why is this true? And uh, mm, Okay, so how, how to say it better? So if you take some, some vector um, so, so uh, actually what, what it is, so, so you have, so okay, let, let us be uh, very explicit. Let, let me maybe not write this. I would like to justify this equality, okay? I don't know, I think it's clear, so that's why I kind of have uh, trouble explaining, but um, so let let me do it like this. So let me take uh, v uh, from here, right? So this is um, sum v one plus v two, right? Uh, this v one is in v one. This one is in v two. Right, um, but then this is just um, so I, I they, then I can decompose v one into uh, direct sum of v mu i's, right? V mu one maybe v mu one plus v mu two plus and so on v mu k and Maybe one here. I'm just trying to be very explicit here. And this one is, a, is not the way decomposition. V2 mu one plus so one plus V2. Maybe not mu one, some other new one. And this new L. The, these are all weight vectors of corresponding weights. And then none of these mu i's, right, are, uh, so mu i is not lambda uh, for each i from 1 to k. And uh, new i is also not lambda for each i from 1 to L because we know that it's not there. Um, yes. So therefore, uh, what what we got, uh, we got that this thing actually belongs 
to a direct sum uh, of m uh, lambda of some mu where mu is strictly less than lambda, right? This is just explicit explanation of why it's true. Because everything else is there is strictly less. And then uh, I actually took, actually I took any vector v uh, from, from v1 plus v2. Right? I, I don't even, uh, uh, yes. So it means uh, that uh, v lambda Yes. Um, so any, any vector is, is uh, uh, from, from v1 plus v2 is from there, but v lambda is from the complement, right? So therefore v lambda is not in v1 plus v2 for sure. Yes, so I, I think I proved everything, right? Is it clear? So if I take any vector from here, it is uh, inside this direct sum. But V lambda, of course, is not satisfied this. So therefore, V lambda is not inside. So therefore, this one is proper. So we don't need that. Yeah, I, I, I thought I, was, I will use some other ar argument. Right, so, um, but, so what I need to write down is this. Um, so but V lambda is not inside M direct sum of M lambda mu as mu is strictly less than lambda. So therefore V lambda is not inside V1 plus V2. So therefore, v1 plus v2 is proper. It does not contain all the vectors uh, in, in, in uh, m lambda. But uh, v1 plus v2, it contains uh, v1. But v1 is maximal. Maximal proper. So therefore, v v one equals v one plus v two. Also, by uh, by the same argument, v two equals v one plus v two. It also can say contained in here, and it is also maximal, right? So therefore, it should coincide with v one plus v two. Right? So therefore, v1 equals v2, and we are done. Right? So we started with this. L1 is this quotient, L2 is this quotient. This is just quotient by the same submodule. So therefore, they co coincide. OK. So, so we proved the proposition. The proposition says say that. Uh, if I start, so I have at most at most one uh, irreducible representation of, of a fixed highest weight. Uh, let us introduce notation uh, once and for all. So uh, if um, um, if there is Um, an irreducible representation of highest weight, and actually uh, I should replace this n by the, according to what we proved, um, of highest weight lambda denoted uh, by L lambda.
Uh, we no don't know for sure now if it exists uh, or not for some given lambda. But if it, it, uh, it, it exists, it's unique, and uh, let's denote it by L lambda. Okay. Um, another proposition. Next step to, to, towards the classification. So let V be uh, finite dimensional uh, irreducible representation of uh, G. Then it, it is a representation of highest weight. And we also can say something about highest weight. So then V is actually isomorphic to L lambda for some lambda uh, from the closure of positive while chamber uh, intersect with uh, weight lattice. So it's, uh, it's, uh, okay, that should we, should we uh, make a reminder of what, what is P of, for example? Does everybody remember it or not? Yes, yeah, so, so okay. Uh, nobody says, uh, 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 so okay, so since, not not everybody uh, uh, confirms that uh, mm, um, that it is clear. P P is uh, 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 P are elements in E. But what is E in our case? Uh, it is H star R. Remember, uh, it's everything which, which is spent by real span of roots. Right, so um, it's lambda in H star um, R. So this is span over real of root system uh, such that two lambda alpha. Uh, over alpha alpha is integer for any alpha in R. So this is some way, this is, this are, this is dis discrete, uh, you know, set of points. On, on, so these are weights. So we say the, uh, kind of a lot of things here. Uh, proof. Uh, so let me see if I stated everything that I wanted. So V is L lambda and, and lambda is from this set, yes. So let's prove this. Um, okay, see, uh, I, I, I will use that uh, it is finite dimensional, so since dimension of V uh, is less than infinity, um, I claim uh, that there exists uh, some lambda uh, right in um, H star such that uh, V of lambda is not zero. And um, V 
of lambda plus alpha i is zero for each i from one to for, for each simple root alpha i. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's, it's a condition of proposition. Okay. So we, we assume that V is finite dimensional now. Okay. okay, because it's like a simple part of the problem to prove that C bar is in the section lambda is a... Yes. Uh, this, this uh, you need for... Um, so, so the statement is only about one particular weight, uh, which is uh, the, the highest weight here, L lambda. Okay, so um, in, in the problem, yes, you're right. Uh, it was about all the weights of Fermat models. Okay. Yes. Okay, so why this is true uh, is just because you take, you can find at least one weight vector, okay, and uh, start adding um, say alpha 1 to this vector. At some point you will get that uh, you c if you add alpha 1 then there's, it's not a weight, right? Otherwise if you do it infinite number of times then you're, you uh, contradict finite dimensionability of, of V, right? But then you start adding alpha 2 until you cannot go further. Then maybe we one again, but maybe alpha one again. But at some point, you you should uh, you should at some step you should end up at some uh, weight lambda, such that you cannot add any alpha i, right? Because if I if I never stop, I always can find the way you know to to add and and get a weight. Again, I contradict uh, that. Dimension of is less than infinity. Why? Because each time I uh, um, I actually increase the height of of uh, v. Okay, so so actually alpha alpha i is the, is a uh, basis, right? And the, I can define height as a sum of all coefficients. So each time adding alpha i, I actually increase this height. So I never go by cycle and, rep and repeat and go back to this weight, right? I always, it's like an infinite path, and if it doesn't stop, then dimension of v is, of course, not uh, finite, okay? So therefore, I can find such a vector. But then, of course, uh, such, um, such a weight is a uh, singular weight in the sense that we have a single vector there in this uh, the, the corresponding weight subspace. So then any v uh, from a v lambda, this lambda that we found there, um, is single. Right, because because if you apply e i to this v, you you are in this uh, way in, in in this space, which we uh, uh, which we know that is zero. So this is an explanation of what's written. Um, okay, uh, but then, so V, v is uh, singular. Um, so let us fix some singular, uh, singular vector from here. And then uh, since V um, Yes, I said this. I didn't forget it this time. So V is irreducible. We know that V is actually generated from this vector V, 
right? Therefore, we actually, what do we have? We have single vector, and V is generated from this single vector. Then, by definition, V is a representation of highest weight. So, therefore, V is a representation uh, of, and we can, again, we, according to what we proved by uniqueness, is the representation of the, um, we, we can actually now write it like this, right? We introduced even notation, so therefore V is L lambda. But now we need to uh, say something about lambda. But uh, consider again this, our favorite number, two lambda alpha i over alpha i alpha i. So this is the weight of V as a, as a, uh, in, in, in V capital as a representation of SL2 alpha i. Right, and also uh, this vector is highest weight vector in this SL2 alpha I representation, right? So uh, this is highest weight in a representation of SL2 alpha I. So therefore, it should be non-negative. And of course, uh, this representation V is finite dimensional, so therefore it should be non-negative. So therefore, two lambda alpha i over alpha i alpha i, right, is from z greater or equal than zero. So first of all, it's it's uh, integer, so therefore it belongs to P, and second, uh, it's it's greater than zero, right? Uh, greater or equal, so its scalar product with any positive root is uh, non-negative, right? It means that it belongs to the pos to the closure because non-negative of positive well chamber. Right, so therefore V, uh, therefore lambda is from C plus intersect P. Okay, so let us uh, summarize what we have done so far. So we actually constructed a map we constructed a map um, no let's call it psi uh, from the um, isomorphism classes of irreducible finite dimensional representations uh, of G to C plus closure intersect P. Uh, let's denote it somehow P plus and uh, also uh, such weights are called uh, integral dominant weights. Integral. Right, so what is, uh, so we take an irreducible finite dimensional representation. We know, we proved that uh, it is uh, L lambda for some lambda from here. Right, so we know that then this, this is some L lambda. And uh, we, the map just 
gives us this the lambda from p plus, right? Um, and uh, we prove that if we found some uh, some uh, other highest weight vector, maybe it's L mu, maybe L lambda is 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 uh, isomorphic to L mu. We prove that actually then mu equals to lambda, so this map is well defined. Also, we proved that this map is bijective. So, which is bijective? This we proved uh, in the last proposition, right? If we have two um, um, no, not, not the last one. The last one says that we actually, in P plus, if we apply such, such a map. But uh, the previous one, the previous one says that uh, if we have two high, highest weight uh, representations of the same highest weight, then they coincide. So this is exactly by objectivity of this map. So to be completely happy, we would like to prove what? We, we, we would like to classify everything in here, right? Uh, so we would like to prove that it's, it's surjective. Then, oh, I'm sorry, no, nobody actually, so it's, uh, it's injective, right? But uh, no, we never proved that it's actually surjective, right? So then it's injective. Right, uh, so if I take two different um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so if I take two different irreducible uh, finite dimensional presentations of G, right, uh, and uh, they are of the same highest weight lambda, so they, Psi gives me the same number, so the same uh, value lambda, then by proposition, I know that they are the same. So it's, it's exactly injectivity, right? But uh, what if I just take some lambda just from P plus? Is there any irreducible finite dimensional representation uh, of highest weight uh, lambda? We don't know yet, right? So though, to be completely happy, we would like to prove uh, surjectivity of this. So let me write this goal as a theorem. So theorem. So you must aim on the, the last uh, uh, proposition. Last proposition says that if I take L lambda, if I take a finite dimensional, yes. then it, it corresponds to some L lambda. Moreover, this lambda is not just any element of H star. It's an element of P plus. So it's actually gives me this map. Our previous proposition says that this map is injective. Okay. Now, um, so theorem uh, phi is by bijection. Uh, not phi, psi is bijection. So we need, what again, what we need to do, we need to prove that for every lambda from P plus, we have finite dimensional reducible representation. Okay, so everything up to this theorem was a, a more or less straightforward generalization of what we did for SLN, if, if you, like uh, at the end of last semester. So if, if, you, uh, if, if you learned everything well, you can see this. But then what we did uh, for SLN to prove that by objectivity. Do you remember? So, so we had weights, right? We had these weights. Uh, here they are some elements of H star, right? But uh, we, we had a more explicit way to do that. For GLN, I had like a tuple of numbers, right? Which 
or eigenvalues of, of EIIs, right? Um, but then uh, we constructed a uh, weight corresponding to zero everywhere and to one on kth place. We just constructed it by hand. Uh, how did we do this? We just take, uh, we just took Cn and it was a representation of highest weight. So, okay, this is a remark for GLN. Of course, uh, I should say SLN because GLN is not semi-simple, but uh, we know that uh, representations of GLN and SLN are almost is the same, almost the same thing up to action of center. But uh, so f f for me, it's uh, kind of uh, more convenient to, to say about the GLN. No. So what we did to prove the existence uh, of, of representation of this highest weight, we take CN. So this is a representation of highest weight when we have one at the first place and zero everywhere else. But then we can consider anti-symmetric tensors. So kth anti-symmetric tensor is a representation of, of exactly this uh, weight. And this is a construction that we did for, GL, for GLN. We can do it for, CL, for SLN, it's just the same. And then, uh, but there's no, um, such construction in, in uh, for, for any semi-simple algebra. And so that's, that's what we would like to do now. Um, how to construct it. So we need, we need to do something with Verma module. That's the only thing that we have in hands. By the way, this is, this is some uh, special case of the construction that I also would like to discuss. Uh, Mm, some combinatorics related to the representations of GLN, like Young diagrams and Young tableau and so on. Anyways, um, uh, okay, so let's um, see what we can do in this uh, general case. So no, no uh, generalization. of this to any g. But uh, what we will do is the following. So maybe let's claim that we are starting to prove the theorem. So we would like to uh, take, so take um, v lambda. Uh, maybe, maybe even so, so. Since you everybody did uh, homework, right? Um, or we will discuss it today anyway. So uh, we know that. Um, so if I consider Verma model of highest weight lambda, then. Of course, I have, uh, um, and, and lambda also belongs to P plus. So, so consider, so fix some lambda from P plus. Then you know that you can have, uh, that, that you do have a bunch of uh, other single vectors in, in M lambda. Um, so let me say exactly where they are. This follows easily from, represent from presentation theory of SO2 and from Verma models for SO2 again. Then, so if I, um, I need to remind what is a sh shifted action of uh, while group, so I write w dot or dot action um, mu 
is w of mu plus rho minus rho, where rho is so-called like well vector, it's half sum of positive roots. So this shifted action of uh, of a well group. Mm, and in the problem, um, you need to show that um, M actually S I dot lambda. Um, first of all, uh, dimension of such thing is, is actually one, but maybe we don't even need this. It's just mm, so only if if you start with it with lambda, there's only one way to go uh, to get this weight. Um, just by applying uh, sufficient number of times fi. It's not not all, uh, no no other element of a PBV, PBW basis will give you this weight. So this that's why this is true. But on the other but also. Uh, uh, you have that this is C some V I. So it's uh, so it's spent by one vector. So choose this one vector, its length. Um, where V I is so N plus V I is zero. So anyway, so if I take lambda, shifted act by SIs, I will get single weight, which means that inside this weight subspace, I can find single vector. So vector, which is, I cannot go back uh, 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 upwards, okay? So this is my VI. And let me take this VI and generate everything so uh, that I can, and denote the corresponding thing that I, I have mi. Okay, so denote so this is on uh, okay seminar. So denote this. Um, then uh, we would like to um, also introduce L lambda tilde, which is M lambda. So so first of all, um, so this these are all uh, submodules in M lambda, right? I can take the, their sum. And quotient by them. I will get another module, L lambda tilde. Let me call it L lambda tilde. Okay. Um, so our goal will be to prove that L lambda tilde is fi finite dimensional, actually. Then we will pr prove this uh, theorem. So claim one. Uh, the theorem. Uh, follows from um, L. Oh, maybe let me. Uh, sorry. Uh, L lambda dimension. So the d uh, the fact that dimension L lambda tilde less than infinity implies. The theorem. So let us see why. It's kind of clear, but uh, again, let us uh, let us uh, spell this out. Um, we uh, we need to find some finite dimensional irreducible representation of highest weight lambda. Right. 
So, but this is some finite dimensional representation, right? Um, and uh, let me take uh, V lambda. Uh, it's, it's an image of M lambda in here. Mm. Right? So, uh, so let V lambda be the, so proof, proof of claim one. be the image uh, of V lambda in L lambda tilde, right? So I take quotient and corresponding image of V lambda, I, I denote as V lambda tilde. Um, so then, um, Let me um, also L lambda tilde. It, it is finite dimensional representation. Therefore, it decomposes as a direct sum of irreducibles. This we know from, uh, from like a lecture, like way before. We proved that for every G, finite dimensional, uh, irreducible, uh, finite dimensional representations uh, are um, simple, right? So, uh, so they decompose as direct sums of reducible representations. So uh, let us call them uh, L1, so maybe Li, direct sum over I, from 1 to whatever, K, uh, where L i are irreducible. So I claim that V lambda tilde uh, is uh, in, in one of representations. Uh, say, uh, so so why, why is this true? So, I, I um, so then V lambda tilde is inside L J for some J. So why is this true? V lambda tilde is a, is a weight vector of weight lambda, of course. Right, because V lambda is a weight vector of weight lambda. When we quotient, it's still weight vector of weight lambda. But on the other hand, um, uh, each Li, each uh, finite dimensional representation admits weight decomposition, right? So each Li itself has weight decomposition, and, and uh, L lambda also has weight decomposition. And weight subspaces of L lambda tilde are direct sums of wet subspaces of uh, Li's, right? Um, but in L lambda, there is only, um, the, the weight subspace of weight lambda is one dimensional, right? So there, therefore, uh, it, so uh, uh, therefore, uh, this, this one dimensional subspace belongs to just one L, Li. Because uh, all others, they, they, they are just of, of different weights. So, okay, let me try to write it down to, to make it more clear. Um, so, L lambda. Um, L lambda, lambda, L lambda tilde lambda, right? So that's what I would like to, to say, is direct sum of I from one to K of L I lambda, right? 
but then uh, dimension of this is 1. So therefore dimension of what's written on the right hand side is 1. So there's only, um, so if, if in, in this sum I have um, two, two indexes at least for, for which corresponding summits are not zero, then the dimension is greater than one, of course. So therefore, for all cements ex expect, except one, call it LJ, right? Uh, here, uh, we have zero. But LJ lambda is not zero. So therefore, V lambda is the vector that generates uh, L lambda tilde is in, inside some LJ, right? So all So L I lambda is zero for all lambda except one, say J. But then it, it means that uh, V lambda tilde is inside LJ. But, but also L lambda tilde is generated, is generated by V lambda tilde. Just because this is true for M lambda, for Verma model, it's generated from the highest weight, right? L lambda is also highest weight uh, model. So therefore, I take LJ, it's irreducible, and it's gener generated by some single vector of weight lambda. So therefore, LJ is L lambda. So I found, so, so I, I proved claim one. So if, if I prove that dimension of L lambda tilde is, is uh, less than infinity, then my LJ, then I prove the existence of a finite dimensional reducible representation of highest weight lambda. So therefore LJ is L lambda. And claim one is proved. Okay, so say, uh, what about time? So how much time do we have? No time? Mm, um, okay, so then uh, we'll continue then on the next lecture. We'll make additional one, I think. Um, and discuss. So maybe then not next Monday, but so okay, we'll arrange that. So let's finish the lecture now. Just let us let us remember that we proved the bijectivity if we proved that such thing is finite dimensional.